Hello everybody, I'm Mr. Wally of the Jackson County Library Services. I'm the children's librarian here in the Medford branch and I'm, I'm here today to talk a little bit about picture books. Let me share with you some titles that I, that I found today that I've used in the past, that I've shared in the past, that I think are pretty great stuff. What I love about children's picture books is that we get to fall into people's art styles that we might not otherwise get a chance to invest our lives in. This one is Mar Mariah Coleman's Aha uh -huh, to Zigzag. I love good alphabet books. You know, why does it have to always be apple, you know, carrot dog? You know, this this is way out. Fun stuff. I, I have her I have her work at home and coffee table books um, that, are, that are made for you know adult reading. She's all over the place. You know, and it says to me that a good coffee table book, a good children's picture book, can be all one and the same. That's how I feel about people. What I love about this is that, you know, the world is filled with people doing all sorts of different things. The, the illustrations on this are, are spare but bold. The colors are, uh, they're, they're uh, dreamlike and and other world duchess and peasant knight and centaur oops messenger and businessman the world is made up of all sorts of people i recommend people this is by blex bolex read it daytime visions by isol another alphabet book what i think about <clears throat> this one is that it follows the rule of children's drawing. You know, we give these assignments, draw a picture of a, of a tree. And the picture of a tree it doesn't have to be a snapshot. It's what a child pictures that tree being. This one here, goodness, you know, a uh, little rabbit family, one more step. Wow. Uh, give it time. Wow, that chicken. You know, when, when you when you think about the power of just a, a blank piece of paper and a box of crayons, that's what I think some of these children's picture books are all about. It doesn't have to be an exact re representation of something. You know, it's it's the power of the story, the words combined with the illustrations. You know, that spark that, that creativity in the mind of a child. Uh, in your mind as well, you know. Maybe it'll, it'll allow for you to pick up a pen and a, and a paper and, and 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 get together with that kid and make fantastic illustrations to rival what you just read. <clears throat> Whose eyes are these? This kind of reminds me of '60s pop art. Crazy illustration. But what I love about this one, you know, is that they give you like this little question: Whose eyes are these? And then all of a sudden, you have this critter. You know, this one is Harry, the boastful hedgehog. And then it asks you to find the critter inside, you know, its natural environment. Crazy illustrations. Wild colors. I think that this is the kind of thing that sits on coffee table books for those folks who just have all kinds of people coming by and you pick this up and all of a sudden you're in a wonderland. And then there's the flip side of children's picture books where they're telling stories that you know are like now. This one, Marwin's Journey, the story of a family, many families on the move. Their lives are turned inside out by events in their lands that have them running. We don't know how this is going to turn out. But the illustrations, this watercolor wash on, you can almost feel the, the paper, um, stays with you for a long time. This is probably one of my favorite picture books that I've discovered. I don't think I'll ever tire of it. I could have this piece of painting, I could have this painting on my wall and, and, and feel happy. That's Marwin's Journey by uh, Arius and Boros. Kids come up with questions, the why questions. In this particular case, this is infinity and me. 
you know, what's infinity? And this, and this little person, you know, starts out by looking at the stars and then starts asking friends and family, what's infinity? Is it numbers? Is it movement and time? Is it the, the people in our family that go way back in time? Illustrations in this are really pretty spectacular. Uh, it's almost spooky, but <clears throat> at the same time, delightful. Highly recommend it. Very European sensibility, Infinity and Me by Swakowska and, and Hosford. This one. I love this one. I've been following Ed Young for many years. And Tsunami, you know, he's, he's a master artist. And what's really special about this one is his use of fabric and fiber, you know, from all sorts of sources. You know, very, very Japanese, you know, uh, but at the same time, timeless in its representation of people. Each one of these little pieces, this is not a, these aren't drawings, this is all cut out using all kinds of, again, different uh, types of material to portray. You know, sea walls and costuming. Story of a grandfather, or uh, an old, old man in the village who is considered wealthy by everyone. And his wealth is in his fields. One day there's an earthquake and the sea rolls out. And everyone's pretty fascinated by the, the sea rolling out and they follow out on the beach. Well, the, the, the old man knows that's a sign that the tsunami is coming and he sets fire to his fields. So much for his, his vast wealth. But he does it because he can't stand the idea of the whole village being lost to the tsunami. Page after page of powerful illustration. You can feel, you know, the frustration, sadness, yet the terror. Um, you have to pick this up, Tsunami, by Kajikawa and Ed Young. This guy, Oliver Jeffers, I just love to death. His picture books just thrill me. This is another alphabet book. This is Once Upon an Alphabet. And what I like about this guy's alphabet book is that each letter comes with its own little story. So, you know, it's not just, again, this is a mouse, this is, you know, a nose, this is, you know, this is uh, a story book uh, where every letter gets its own story. How nice is that? Working fun, again, imaginative. This one I thought was cool too. Usually picture books will, there's a story. And you start at the cover, you end the, at the end. This one, every page, and it's nice collage work. The, uh, the king is a little cutout. It's all simple stuff. Um, you know, it's just color pencils and, again, cutouts. That's the story. That's the story. You could really use this to promote discussion. You could use it in a classroom. I think it's great stuff. Um, the King and the Sea by uh, Janish and L. L. Brook. Good stuff. I love Gravit. Emily did a nice job with collage work and spells. This one was super cool. It was supposed to be like let's call it a calendar. And a lot of the pages have like little extra pop-ups. There's extra things for kids to look at and feel and touch and unfold. You can hang it on your wall, I guess. I don't know how this ended up in my picture book collection, because there's no way that this is going to last, <laughs> but I think it's it's magical. The illustrations are just cool as all get out. And this one, you know, it, it looks like watercolor wash and, and ink. I I think it's grand. And I'm going to end on, on a note of a couple of woodcutty looking books. This one definitely is My Son John, Fever Dream Colors. I mean, how? <laughs> Great stuff, simple, simple rhymes. 
I just I just love the good wood cut. I'm gonna have to get another copy of this one. This one's kind of taped up. It's got a lot of love and and then this guy here, Chris Gall. You know, he does he does a lot of offbeat stories. He did a one one story that I used at story time about a family who moves to Mars and the kid's bored to death and he takes his little robot dog around and makes discoveries. This one right here is equally strange. All these people with fish in their lives. You know, fish dog. What's that all about? The batter up with the barracuda. You know, some days that's what it feels like in my head. I think we could all use more magic in our lives, and I think that's one of the, the beautiful things about children's picture books. It's been really great sharing these books with you today. I look forward to seeing you at the library, and if I don't see you, get online, place those on hold, and you tell me when I see you next what you thought about those books. It's been a happy afternoon. Look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye.